Can you really reverse prediabetes? My name is Diana Lacalzi. I'm a registered dietitian and a certified diabetes care and education specialist. And I'm on a mission to help people reverse the root cause of pre and type 2 diabetes. So in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly that, how to reverse prediabetes and keep it reversed for good. So if that sounds good to you, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Currently, 96 million Americans have prediabetes. That's more than one in three people. And shockingly, more than 80% of these people don't know they have prediabetes. And that's because prediabetes is a silent disease. It doesn't have any signs or symptoms, and it can go untreated for months, even years. However, if it's left untreated, about 70% of people who have prediabetes will go on to develop type 2 diabetes. So today I'm going to discuss the best ways to reverse prediabetes and how to prevent it from becoming type 2 diabetes. Before we dive in, what exactly is prediabetes? So the amount of sugar or glucose someone has in their blood determines whether they have pre or type 2 diabetes. A person without diabetes has a fasting blood sugar level below 100 milligrams per deciliter or an HbA1c test below 5.7%. A fasting blood sugar level determines what your blood sugar levels are without the influence of food or drink. That's why it's done in a fasted state and you can usually do it first thing in the morning. You just check your fasting blood sugar levels. HbA1c or A1c for short is a test that measures your average blood sugar over the last three months. So while your fasting blood sugar measures your blood sugar in that exact moment, an A1c test measures your blood sugar over a longer period of time. So over time, if a person's blood sugar levels rises above this normal criteria, they then enter this prediabetes range. The diagnostic criteria for having prediabetes is when your fasting blood sugar levels are between 100 and 125 milligrams per deciliter or an A1C between 5.7 and 6.4%. If blood sugar levels continue to rise above these ranges, then type 2 diabetes follows. The diagnostic criteria for type 2 diabetes is having a fasting blood sugar of 126 milligrams per deciliter or greater, or an A1C of 6.5% or greater. So how exactly does pre and type 2 diabetes develop? So type 2 diabetes is often referred to as insulin resistant diabetes and often takes years to develop. So to understand the progression of insulin resistance to prediabetes to type 2 diabetes, we really need to take a step back and understand how glucose and insulin work in our body. So when we eat any kind of a food that contains carbohydrates, our body digests and absorbs those carbohydrates as glucose. And glucose is our brain and our body's preferred source of energy. So when glucose then enters our bloodstream, our pancreas receives a signal to release insulin. So insulin acts like a key and it goes to the cells in our body and unlocks these glucose channels that are found on the surface of all of our cells. Once the channel opens, then glucose can get out of the blood and into the channel into the cell, where the cells can then use glucose as energy or store it for later use. So this is a very normal physiological response. We eat carbohydrates, our pancreas receives a signal to release insulin. Insulin acts like a key and helps get glucose out of our bloodstream and into our cells. However, if we have some degree of insulin resistance, our cells start to become resistant to insulin's actions. So basically insulin goes to do its job as a key, but our cells don't quite react as efficiently and effectively as before. So if insulin can't really do its job, then glucose starts to linger in our bloodstream. And if nothing is done to reverse that insulin resistance, then the glucose will continue to linger and build up over time, thus leading to prediabetes levels and then ultimately type two diabetes. So there are many different reasons why insulin resistance develops, but the strongest risk factor that we know today is having excess body fat, especially excess fat around the abdominal area. We now know that having this excess abdominal fat is the strongest risk factor for type 2 diabetes and will always cause some degree of insulin resistance. So how do you reverse insulin resistance? How do you reverse prediabetes? And how do you prevent it from becoming type 2 diabetes? One of the best ways to reverse prediabetes is through weight loss and physical activity. In 2002, there was this landmark study that was published called the Diabetes Prevention Program Trial. It showed that if people achieved a 7% reduction in body weight and engaged in 150 minutes of physical activity per week, they were able to reduce their incidence of type 2 diabetes by 58%. This was huge and made headlines everywhere, showing us that you can, in fact, reverse prediabetes and prevent it from becoming type 2 diabetes if you focus on weight loss and increase 
your physical activity. There is also a well-established link between diet and pre and type 2 diabetes. The standard American diet, which is very high in refined carbohydrates, added sugar, saturated fats, and ultra-processed foods, often leads to weight gain and also leads to insulin resistance and pre and type 2 diabetes. The research shows us that if we can switch our dietary patterns to focus on fruits, vegetables, whole grains, lean proteins, legumes, nuts, and seeds, then we can reverse insulin resistance and pre and type 2 diabetes. And lastly, here are three actionable steps you can take today to start reversing prediabetes. So number one, swap some animal-based proteins like red meat or processed meats for more plant-based proteins like beans, lentils, tofu, etc. This will help reduce the saturated fat in your diet and also increase the fiber intake in your diet. Two of the most important nutrients for lowering your risk of insulin resistance pre and type 2 diabetes. Number two, swap refined carbohydrates for their whole grain counterparts. So for example, if your diet consists of things like white bread, sugary breakfast cereals, chips, then swap them for their whole grain counterparts, which would be things like whole grains, oatmeal, and popcorn. The reduction in refined grains and increasing your whole grain intake not only will be more favorable for your blood sugar levels, but it will also reduce your risk of developing type 2 diabetes. And number three, get moving. Engaging in physical activity is crucial for reversing prediabetes. Physical activity lowers blood sugar, improves glycemic control, and increases insulin sensitivity. It truly is a powerhouse and you should aim to be getting 150 minutes of physical activity every week. So to recap, one in three people in the United States have prediabetes and 80% of those people don't even know they have it. So it's important to get your blood sugar levels checked periodically. Excess fat, especially around the abdominal area, is one of the strongest risk factors for pre and type 2 diabetes. And one of the best ways to reverse prediabetes and prevent it from becoming type 2 diabetes is through weight loss and physical activity. Focusing on a diet that really emphasizes the reduction of saturated fats and ultra processed foods and really focuses on whole foods that are rich in fiber is going to be one of the best ways to lose weight and to treat pre and type 2 diabetes. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to our channel. See you next time.